Hello there everybody, Sam Stroins here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another experiment. Today I'm going to be conducting an investigation into what happens when you short circuit your model railway controllers. <laughs> Okay, so realistically, it's probably not going to be that dramatic. And actually, this is probably not the video you thought it was. I'm actually quite serious about this. I really do think it could be interesting and useful to find out how different model railway controllers respond to a short circuit in order to protect themselves and, of course, more importantly, to protect your precious model trains. First of all, though, what is a short circuit? And for that, I need a screwdriver. Here it is. So a short circuit occurs when a load of very low resistance is placed across a circuit, okay? And that's where the screwdriver comes in. We've all done this, you shouldn't do it, but I think most of us have. So if you put a screwdriver across the two train tracks of your model railway, you will be shorting out your controller. And what will happen on a controller without any short circuit protection is that the full power of that controller will run through the screwdriver. And of course that stresses out the controller. It puts the components under a load, it gets them hot, sometimes they'll overheat, and usually they will burn out. And when that happens, no more controller. But obviously, if you're putting a screwdriver across the tracks of your model railway, you deserve to have bad things happen to you, okay? But there could be less mischievous reasons why short circuits occur, so let's talk about one or two of those. Okay, so let's say one of your locos is running along and it derails on a set of points and the wheels bridge across the tracks. That would do it, and that would be a bit more innocent, and perhaps it takes you a minute or two to realise it's happened, perhaps you don't get to the controller straight away. That could do your controller in. What about locomotives then? Can short circuits damage your locos? Well, yeah, I think so. Uh, so imagine, let's say you're running in a locomotive on the rolling road and you go downstairs for five minutes to get a cup of tea. Now, you shouldn't be leaving locos unattended, but obviously sometimes we do. So while you're downstairs, let's imagine the valve gear jams up, okay, and stalls the motor. Now, a stalled motor will draw much more current than a motor that is working properly, and obviously current generates heat, and heat inside a tiny motor like that can burn out the armature it can melt the windings on the armature together, cause a short circuit, you've blown up your motor. You do not want short circuits. And that's where short circuit protection comes in. Controllers that have it will cut that current as soon as the short circuit is detected and it protects the controller and it protects your locos. So today's test is going to be over a range of different controllers. I've got old ones, I've got modern ones, I've got everything in between really. A good selection. I'm going to be testing them to find, well, to find the answers to four questions really. First question, do these controllers have short circuit protection? We know some of them do, but do all of them? Big question. The second, how long does it take for that short circuit protection to kick in? Some controllers take their time, others do it immediately. That should be interesting. Quite an important question is how much current has to be flowing through the circuit before the controller will trigger a short circuit? Um, obviously, if that amount is too low, then obviously power-hungry locos could trip it, or if you did a double header, that could trip it. Too high, of course, then you could have these emergency situations and the controller wouldn't realise that a short circuit had occurred. So let's try this. I should say don't try this at home. Sometimes we do short out controllers and it is reasonable safe for the most part but you certainly shouldn't be doing it on purpose so let me show you the experiment let's find the answers to some of these questions all right let's do it so the experiment is going to go like this each controller will be set up one at a time here connected to that controller is the switch no other load besides the switch so when this switch is flicked the controller will be short circuited it's also coupled up to the ammeter here so the number of amps will be displayed on this screen when I flick the switch, having turned the controller up to full power, I will start the timer here and we will sit back and observe. Obviously, if there is some short circuit protection, we will see that the current will drop immediately or it might not even rise at all, um, but that we will see. We're starting off then with the cheapo Hornby train set controllers. I don't think they're very good controllers, but I think they are very, very safe. And when I call a controller unsafe today, I don't mean it's going to burn down your house. I just mean that it could damage itself or your locos. I think these are pretty safe controllers, and I think most of us know what happens <laughs> when you short these out. So I thought we would start with this one because it's not going to be that interesting. So let's turn it up to full power then. There we go. I'm going to get my finger ready on the switch and my finger over the start button of the timer. One, two, three, go. Okay. 
Well, that was incredibly dull. Might as well stop the timer. So I've got this little table. Protection, yes, I think that's a yes. So we can put a tick in there. Time to kick in, well, that was basically zero. Maximum current measured, I didn't see the meter jump at all. It stayed basically at zero. So we will put zero in there. Trigger current, I'm not sure what that is right now, uh, but we will measure that in a little while. Next up then, we have the equivalent Backman controller that ships with a lot of their train sets. It's called Speed Controller here, although I think it's also referred to as the EZ Controller. So let's test this out then. Let me turn it up to full pelt. Get ready with the start button and the switch. One, two, three, begin. Okay, so as you see, we have full current, 0 0.804 amps. And time is ticking on. How long do we give this? <laughs> I'm not sure this actually has any short circuit protection at all, 0 0.8 amps. A normal running current for a loco is 0 0.2 amps, so we're running here four times what a loco should normally be able to take. So if a loco shorted out or if the valve gear jammed up, you have up to 0.8 amps running through that loco now. Okay, well it's been over 30 seconds, so we can fill out the graph. Protection. Nope, no protection that I could see. Time to kick in, well that's not applicable. Maximum current measured was 0 0.8 amps. Okay, so it's obviously not a lot of current, it's not gonna be burning your house down and it is probably stone cold, <laughs> but not as good as the Hornby controller. That was putting out quite a lot of current under short circuit, no cutoff whatsoever. Okay, next. Next up, my controller of choice, this is the Gauge Master. Quite a powerful controller. Under normal use, this is supposed to be able to put out one amp, I believe. So let's find out how it responds to a short circuit. I'm gonna turn it up, just one of the two controllers, of course, and get ready to start. Three, two, one, go. Four amps. Okay. So I will have to review the footage to guarantee what current I saw always keep, keeps going but there was a massive amount of current there. Nearly five amps, basically, was running through that. That is a crazy amount of power. You will have heard, though, there was a bit of a click there, and after that click, the current dropped to zero. I think there's a relay in here, which is a really nice little system, actually, but the possible downfall with that is that it just keeps turning itself back on to check and turning itself back on when the short is not cleared. So there are times when a lot of current does pass through this controller. So let's fill this in then. So yes, there is some short circuit protection. We're talking about two seconds, uh, 2.73 seconds for the time to kick in. So that's quite a long while. At five amps, that's probably enough time to do some damage. And the maximum current measured was around, I will put in the actual figure when I reviewed the footage and get back to you on that one. That is kind of shocking, isn't it? Five amps is an awful lot of current when the locos are supposed to run at about 0.2 amps. Crazy stuff. Okay, moving on. Next up then, a real old favorite. It is the Hornby HM2000. Uh, yeah, let's see how this one goes. So ramp it up to full pace. Uh, this one's capable of putting out 550 milliamps, it says on the back. So we'll see how it actually does. Here we go. One, two, three, start. Okay, we have ooh, six amps, six amps, and it is still going. Five amps, it's dropping, and it stopped. There we go, cut it off. Five amps, that is 10 times what this is rated for, and it put that out for around eight seconds. Mmm, not sure what to make of that. So let's bring up the table again. So yeah, it does have the short circuit protection. It wasn't putting out that sort of current for all that long, but eight seconds is quite a long while. It took 8.8 .8 seconds. Good Lord, that's a long time. And the maximum current I measured, I will put in right there. It was about five amps though. That is an incredible amount of current, frightening in fact. And it was passing that for quite a long while. I think any loco stalled would be pretty much fried after that. Wow, that is a lot of current. Okay, next controller. Up next then, we have the excellent Mahano controller. Very inexpensive, these. As you can see from the front, this is only capable of putting out 400 milliamps. Well, that's what it's rated for. So let's turn it up and find out what it's actually capable of doing. So let me grab the switch, ready? Switch is ready, start button, here we go. Okay. That is very low current straight away. So we need to stop the timer. It wasn't passing very much current, about 190 milliamps.
which suggests to me that it knew that there was something wrong straight away and that small amount of current there is just to help detect whether or not there is still a short circuit present. So if I break the circuit, okay, and power it up again, yeah, it seems that it does have short circuit protection. That amount of current is not enough to damage a loco. So let's turn off the switch and bring up the table. So I think it does have short circuit protection, yes. The time to kick in seemed to be zero. It seemed to come on straight away, which is really, really good. And the maximum current measured was, I'm gonna put 0 0.2 amps. Um, that's rounded up, of course. Not very much at all. Yeah, overall, that's quite impressive. Not bad at all, that. Okay, one more controller still to come. Let's get to that one. All right, so I really wanted to try an old-fashioned controller to see how they shape up. I was truly expecting all of the others to have some sort of protection on them. I'm not sure whether this one does or not. So let's put this up to full power, full on normal. Finger on the switch, ready to go. Start the timer, here we go. Ooh, 1.3 amps. It's not as much as some. Is it going to detect a short circuit? Uh, time's going on, <laughs> 10 seconds in. Nothing yet, 1.3, current's pretty steady. Okay, well, we're being fair and giving it the 30 seconds that the other controllers had. <laughs> it's not looking good though, is it? How long do we give it? 30, 29, 30, okay. So, short circuit protection on the old fashioned Meccano controller, that is a no. The time to kicking is not applicable and the maximum current is 1.3 amps. Okay, stop the clock, that was useless. Okay, so yeah, that is not recommended. Over an amp going through your model railway <laughs> with no short circuit protection whatsoever. Okay, so let's finish off the experiment then and do the other test. So that is the first part of the testing completed. And I have to say the results there were absolutely shocking, at least for some of the controllers. So the highest current rating for any of those controllers was one amp. And I've just measured current outputs of six amps. That's the highest I've managed to measure, absolutely crazy. Which does make the next part of the challenge a little bit difficult because obviously I only bought components that were suitable for one amp, maybe a little bit more. As I say, that's the highest any of them were rated. So I don't know what's going to happen with this next part. This is the point where I try to find out at what current the controllers actually cut out. I might have to try a different approach to this, but here we go. Let me show you the test and see how it works. Okay, so part two of the experiment is gonna go like this. We've still got the controller, still got the ammeter, but now we have this interesting thing, which is like a variable resistor instead of the switch, which means I can slowly crank down the resistance and increase the current gently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep a close eye on the current and slowly reduce the resistance and find out what the maximum current is before the short circuit protection cuts in. Obviously, we're starting with the Hornby train set one again. I'm not going to be doing this with the Easy controller or the old Meccano controller because, of course, they did not have any short circuit protection to test. So with that, let's go straight up to full power. As you can see, the lowest resistance of this is not um, infinite, so we do have some current flowing there. Zero was about 33, 38, I can't really read it. Yeah, 38 milliamps. So with that, let's slowly increase and see what happens. Sorry, I just had to move the multimeter so I can still read it. Okay. So let's crank it up. Go a bit faster, I think. This is not very much current at the moment. Uh, the controller should be able to put out a couple of hundred uh, milliamps. So there we are, 0.1 amp. Got to do this steadily because this a variable resistor will suddenly start to really drop in resistance. That's 0.2 amps, that's about what's needed to run a motor, I would guess. Here we go, 0.3 amps, still going. 0.4 amps, that's probably a double header if you've got a really eff efficient couple of locos. Keep going, 0.7, 0 0.8, 1 amp, 1.1, oh. hope variable variable resistors uh, going up in smoke <laughs> let me just give it a second to cool down <laughs> okay so we've got 2.3 0.4 0.8 1.3 1.6 1 and it went okay so that put out 1.6 amps roughly before the short circuit protection cut in okay let's try the next one Okay, the gauge master then, I'm not sure how well this is gonna go. I think it's gonna blow up my resistor as I keep turning it up, but we'll give it a go. Okay, nice and quickly then, let's see. 
0.3, 0 0.47, 4 amps. All right, so it, it did take about 3 amps, I reckon. I will double check the footage. Pwah. Yeah, my resistor is uh, borderline on fire, I would say. <laughs> so I will just turn off the controller. There we go. Okay, let's move on to the HM2000 then. Okay, HM2000 then, here we go. Let me turn this up as quickly as I can. Five amps. Yeah, it's sustaining five amps. Okay, there is smoke everywhere, <laughs> and I think it's finally cut off. I will check the footage. <laughs> yeah, this was not a good idea at all. There we go. Yeah, it was a good four amps it was putting out for quite some time there. Obviously, once again, not a 100% fair test, because <laughs> I couldn't sustain it with that smelly resistor. Poor dear. Yes, that made quite a lot of smoke, that did. But hopefully, that will uh, be a rough demonstration anyway. Okay, Mahano, here we go then. It is already set to full power. Let's do this reasonably quickly. 7.1 amp, 0.2 amps, 0.3. Okay, so it really did only get up to its limit before it cut off. We only got about 0.4 amps and then the current dropped. Let's just do that again to verify it. One. Two, 300 milliamps, and then it's off. Yep, yeah, that's it. Okay, so the Mahano is very, very good. It actually cuts out exactly on its rated current output, which is exactly what I wanted to see. Okay, so that's 0.4 amps. Okay, so the results there were inconclusive. Unfortunately, the variable resistor I was using wasn't able to take that kind of current before it got really, really hot. So what I've had to do for the Gauge Master and the HM2000 was actually set up 040s on my layout and keep adding them and adding them and adding them until the short circuit protection kicked in. So I do now, if I show you the table, I do now have approximate, this is only approximate, um, but I do have the approximate sustained currents before the short circuit protection triggered. So for the Gauge Master, Master controller it was 2.7 amps anything higher than that and those relays were kicking in and cutting the power so take that with a pinch of salt I'm not saying that's accurate but that's what I managed to measure sustained the Hornby HM2000 was a little bit higher I managed to get that to sustain 3.3 amps before that cut out now then, it is time to certify each of these controllers. So I'm going to be giving them either Sam's Short Circuit Safety Silver Star certification or the wagging finger of burning electronics. So let's work through these one by one looking at the table. So the Hornby train set controller did have short circuit protection, which kicked in immediately. And I noticed that the trigger current was about 1.6 amps. That has to be the certification. That is a thumbs up. That is very, very good. Perfectly safe for your locos and for the controller. The Backman EZ controller did not appear to have any short circuit protection, so there was no time to kick in. The maximum current output I measured though was 0.8 amps, which was within the rating of the controller. It is a little bit high, I wouldn't want to have 0.8 amps running through a motor that was stalled for example, so that's not absolutely brilliant. However, I don't think there's any sort of threat posed by that, not that there is with any of those. So it is going to get the wagging finger of burning electronics, but not because it's particularly dodgy or anything like that. I think 0.8 amps is quite reasonable. Reasonable. Next up then, the Gauge Master controller. This is my controller of choice. It did have short circuit protection, but it did take a little while to kick in. It was the best part of three seconds before that kicked in. And during that time, I measured a maximum current of five amps. That is five times what the controller was rated to put out. Quite a lot of current is that. And then, of course, the trigger current there was about 2.7 amps, which is still about three times what the controller is rated for. So there is a possibility that the controllers could damage themselves. And of course, with an output of five amps for nearly three seconds, I think there's a possibility of motors being damaged there. I highly recommend the Gauge Master controllers, but obviously be very careful with them. Don't leave your trains unattended because if a short circuit should occur, you've got potentially five amps running through your lines for a couple of seconds. 
Next up then, possibly the most shocking of them all was the HM2000 from Hornby. Now this did have short circuit protection, it did cut off eventually, but it took 8.8 .8 seconds in order to do so, and in that 8.8 .8 seconds I measured up to 6 amps of current, that is 10 times what that controller was rated for, it was rated for 550 milliamps, and we saw 6,000 milliamps come out of there. That was absolutely unbelievable and quite a long time for that short circuit protection to kick in. Maybe the controller could damage itself in that time and 6 amps for 8 seconds is more than enough to burn out a motor. So again, they're really good controllers, the performance is excellent, but pay attention to them. Don't go leaving the room and leaving the locos running. <laughs> Not a good idea at all. The trigger current for that one, I measured 3.3 amps. Uh, that's what I managed to get the controller to sustain without cutting out. Anything higher than that or much higher than that was causing problems. It was causing the short circuit protection to kick in, which means they are powerful. The same thing goes with the Gauge Master. A lot of power there. You can run quite a lot of locos at once, but of course, when you do that, you are overloading the controller and there's nothing really to stop you doing that. Next up then, another really good one, this was the Mahano controller. This did seem to have short circuit protection because as soon as I shorted it out, the current was lower than the rated current of the controller. I measured a maximum current of 0.2 amps, which seems to be on the low and safe side. The trigger current was about 0.4 amps. I actually managed to measure that one quite accurately because it was low enough that my equipment could handle it. And that's exactly what the controller was rated for. So that has to get the certification there. I won't try the tongue twister again. And finally, the controller that was in there just for a little bit of fun, the Meccano controller, didn't seem to have any short circuit protection whatsoever. I measured a maximum current of 1.3 amps, which is pretty high, uh, probably not enough to destroy the controller because obviously they were bulletproof back then, but it's probably enough to burn out some motors. So if you're using old controllers, bear in mind that they might not have any short circuit protection. And of course, the trigger current there is not applicable. Um, so that one obviously does get the wagging finger of burning electronics. So, quite interesting. Are any of these controllers particularly dangerous? No, I don't think so, but of course 5, 6 amps is enough to cause some serious heat. In fact, it could probably melt DCC wire. Maybe that's a test for the future. The lesson from this, though, is that you should never be leaving your model trains unattended. Provided you're there in the room to witness these short circuits taking place, there should never be a situation where you or your belongings are in danger because if you turn them off within a few seconds, there's not going to be much damage beyond perhaps a bit of a burnt out motor or something like that. So none of these controllers are going to burn down your house or anything dramatic like that. Don't think that, of course. But it is worth bearing in mind that if you leave your trains unattended, damage could occur to the locos, to the track potentially, although 6 amps probably not, and possibly to the controller as well, although I should say none of my controllers were damaged by this. Either way, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a test there. I'm sorry that my equipment uh, failed me there. The variable resistor nearly caught fire. So yeah, that was because I was not expecting 5 amps. I guess that's because I did it all uh, live on camera without testing it first. I always like to do that because then the shock is genuine <laughs> and it was quite a shock that actually six amps i can't get over that man either way thanks for watching you take care and i'll see you soon cheers everybody